Last time I tried to make a robot which balanced on one actively driven two axis omni wheel. This wheel is driven by two motors in a differential drive configuration so it can drive sideways as well as forwards and backwards like a normal wheel. The design was mostly taken from a Honda patent and Honda had showcased a proof of concept machine called the U3X. The original design showed all of the wheels around the circumference being driven together by a flexible shaft but this is very hard to reproduce. So in my version I just attached all the wheels to a central hub. Those wheels are driven by two hubs with rollers mounted on them at 45 degrees. This causes the wheels to rotate as the hubs are turned in opposite directions on either side. It worked well during low speed testing but I couldn't get enough traction while accelerating fast to make the device balance. This was largely down to slippage between the rollers on the hubs and the wheels around the circumference. There's also quite a lot of friction between all of the rollers and wheels so it's probably not very efficient. I'd also looked at another wheel design called Umburo. This robot uses helical gears to translate the motion to drive the wheels around the circumference with a motor mounted in line with the main wheel axis. This design uses shorter flexible shafts so that each helical gear drives three wheels, although I guess more helical gears could be added so that there's one for each small wheel. Last time I mentioned a toy by Spinmaster called the Ducati Upriser. This is a motorcycle toy which has a two axis actively driven omni wheel for its back wheel. That allows it to do all sorts of tricks as well as balance on its back wheel. I got hold of one of these and it's a pretty cool toy. It balances pretty well in one wheel mode as well as on two wheels. I'd found various reviews online but no one had dismantled the back wheel to see what's inside. So here we go. Here's the back wheel and as you can see it turns in one axis and has lots of little rollers around its circumference which are all locked together so that the wheel can drive sideways. It's controlled with two motors, one each side in a differential drive configuration and those turn in opposite directions as I spin the little wheels. Obviously if I spin one of those it spins the other one in the opposite direction so those are both locked together with the internal mechanism. Inside we've got two bevel gears which drive all of the little bevel gears and there's one for each of the wheels. So we can see one bevel gear is in place here so they're still locked together. Inside that is some more bevel gears driving all of the little wheels. So it's quite an interesting design although there's rather a lot more gears for my liking. So in the end I've decided to do something totally new, totally of my own design, which I mentioned last time, which is using a drive belt to translate the motion around 90 degrees just by putting a twist in it. I made a prototype mechanism to see how well this will work, and obviously we won't have much space in the wheel so that belt has to be pretty short. And that means, unfortunately, as we turn one of the pulleys, the belt actually walks along the other pulley and eventually the teeth of the belt get jammed on the plastic of the edge of the pulley, basically the sides of the pulley that's keeping the belt into its pulley groove. So that's the same on both of those, it walks quite a lot and that means it just jams after we've turned it two or three times. The solution to this is two little idlers that squash that belt into the middle so that it's practically touching and that seems to help quite a lot with keeping that motion running smoothly. So now we can see that as we turn either pulley the belt does walk a little bit within that pulley channel but when it gets to the end it's perfectly happy rubbing on the sides, it doesn't try to walk up with the teeth on the belt and get jammed. And you can see that walks on both sides still but it's actually perfectly fine and there's hardly any backlash. So now all we need to do is build a wheel with multiple sets of those pulleys and twisted belts on idlers so that we can translate the motion around from a central geared hub in the middle. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. My little wheels need to grip of course so I've got some TPU sleeves that I've made and each one's got a little key so they lock on there. I'll probably use some glue to hold them on as well so they don't just spin around because they're a bit loose but that should help us get traction with the ground. Those mount on 4mm stainless steel bars and there's 8 of those all around the wheel. 
I've made some slots in here which allows a 4mm bar or bolt to slide up and down and that's in fact where all of the other pulleys are mounted that mesh with the central gear. And this is very important to get the assembly done and tension the belts. So with all of my wheels mounted and my pulleys and idlers mounted, we now can see that we've got that mechanism spaced 8 times around the circumference of the wheel. There's another similar plate which goes onto the top there and that just screws on all the way round and then I can push through all the steel bars that hold the idlers. So we've got these bolts as you can see which are able to slide and that means I can move those pulleys and gears around and the plan was that we could push them all out, put in the central gear and then tension them all back in the middle to pull the belts tight and mesh it with the gear. But as it is I can't actually squeeze that gear in so I had to take it all to pieces to put that in. But basically what we're going to do now is put a ring on and that's going to pull all those bolts in so that they mesh with the gear and they pull the belts nice and tight against the wheels on the outside. So here's the bottom one fitted and it's just tacked in place with a couple of screws and then after some wrangling to try and tension those belts and also get the gears in the right position to mesh I can put the ring on the bottom and push the other end of the bolt in so that we can finally get all of those belts tensioned and everything meshing nicely together. There's now another ring which has a bearing mounted in and that bearing goes onto that central geared hub to hold it centrally in the middle. And that gets screwed on all the way around and there's a recess there you'll notice for those nut heads. So now if I turn the little wheels you can see the central hub is turning pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. But now we just need to do something to the other side. You'll notice that hub has a bearing in the middle and that's so we can put an axle through which is supported by another piece on the side which again has recesses for those bolt heads. We're going to need a spacer though which is basically one washer sat on the axle that just holds that bearing away from the red plate so it doesn't rub on it. And on top of that is a pulley which is going to drive the main wheel around. But before we continue with that it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor which is Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. It allows engineers to connect effortlessly with every part of the electronics design process. Altium Designer brings 35 years of innovation and development and is focused on a truly unified design environment which makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Altium Designer you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Altium Designer allows you to share the real-time state of projects on the web so that web team members, manufacturers and even customers can review and mark up your designs without ever leaving your design space. Altium Designer integrates with mechanical design software and allows bi-directional communication between your ECAD and MCAD tools, which makes collaboration with other parts of the product design team easy. Native integration with Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks and PTC Creo is up to 10 times faster than your typical error-prone data exchange methods. As a result of the Altium 365 Cloud, which comes included in your subscription plan, teamwork and collaboration are easy with nothing additional to install or configure. So check out the link in the description to this video to start your free trial of Altium Designer today. Back on the other side, we only want to drive the central hub, which has got screw holes for another pulley, and that sits proud of the red plate, so that when we turn it, it only turns the internal mechanism and turns the little wheels. So now if I turn that pulley we can see all the little wheels are moving and that's going to be fine and it seems to be quite free moving and there's hardly any friction in here. So obviously it will run like a normal wheel in one direction by turning both of those pulleys at the same time and that seems okay because of the contours we've got on the small wheels. For now if I turn that one pulley on the side there then it will go sideways with all those little wheels turning. And that seems to have quite a lot of traction with the ground. This feels much much better than the last design with all those 45 degree rollers that were rubbing on all of the little wheels so I guess my mechanism is just a lot freer moving. There's also hardly any backlash if I turn the little wheel we can see the big pulley moving and there's hardly any dead spot in there. There are some gaps in between the gears from the central hub to the little gears with the first pulley stage but basically I'm pretty happy with how that's worked. It seems to be pretty solid. You'll have noticed I made those wheels taper at each end so they actually follow the circumference of the circle much better than they would if they were just straight cylinders. This is going to cause a bit of a problem potentially though because one end the circumference is much shorter than the other so to make a balancing robot that's going to affect the velocity depending on the wheel in the other axis. 
So all that's left is to put that wheel back on the test rig I made last time to try and make a one wheel balancing robot. And that's driven by two fairly large brushless motors, so we've got plenty of power, an O-Drive 3.6 brushless motor driver, and a Teensy 4.1 with an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit. To drive backwards and forwards, I drive both of those pulleys, and that makes the wheel turn as normal, and if I want to turn the little wheels, I just turn one of the pulleys. This is a much more reliable mechanism than the last one where we had those hubs rubbing with their 45 degree wheels and we had to get the compression exactly right on both sides otherwise the wheel would creep in one direction. This one of course is very much more predictable because we've just got one pulley we turn to turn the whole wheel and one that we turn to turn the little wheels and we just need to do a little bit of code to mix the two together. There is a little bit of backlash but that's actually back driving the brushless motor so otherwise it works really well and it stays in one position when I drive the little wheels with that pulley on the side. So I'm pretty happy with how that whole mechanism's turned out. And this is much more similar to the Umburo mechanism rather than the Honda mechanism. It looks like there's plenty of traction with the ground if I operate this manually side to side. And last time of course we had that slippage within the mechanism where those side rollers were running on the wheels which causes lots of problems. This one of course is no slippage because we've got gears and belts so nothing slips under normal circumstances. So all I have to do now is tune it up to balance which took a little bit of a while. This is a bit of footage from when it looked like it was almost working. There have been a few issues with that side to side axis I'll talk about in a moment but on the whole it's been much easier to tune up than the last one. Of course it's really hard to make a balancing robot when it's actually got some slippage in its drive mechanism. And with a bit more tuning, here we go, it balances independently on its one wheel with two active axes, looking at both the pitch and roll from the inertial measurement unit and running a PID controller on both of them to differentially drive that wheel with the two motors. Now I have had quite a bit of an issue balancing up side to side and that's owing to that tapered or cone shaped wheel that I've got, the little wheels all around the outside. The difference in circumference between the small part of the wheel and the big part of the wheel is actually quite a lot and that affects the velocity that will drive side to side depending on the position of the wheel in the other axis. So it's actually been very difficult to tune because that velocity is quite a lot different and so I've basically tuned it up somewhere in between not enough velocity and too much. So hoping to sort of average it out there assuming that it's going to be moving in the other axis as well constantly. But sometimes it just doesn't have enough gain to balance, so it goes shooting off, and sometimes it's got too much and it gets really wobbly because it's oscillating, because it's overshooting. So this is a bit of a problem we'd have to resolve to make a much better version of this machine. But for now, it seems to kind of work okay, but sometimes I kind of have to grab it when it gets a bit carried away and gets into either an oscillation or it just doesn't have enough gain so it keeps driving sideways as fast as it can to try and catch itself and it's really hard to differentiate between the two and see what's happening. So as you can see it seems to be stable for quite some time before it just gets into the wrong position on those two axes and then it doesn't balance very well anymore. But I'm pretty happy with how this has worked out anyway and I'm pretty happy with how solid the mechanism is for the wheel that I've got. It just needs a couple of modifications there, probably just to make the little wheels have a constant diameter throughout their whole length. So looking back on Umburo, we can see it's got lots of wheels which are perfect cylinders rather than having tapered wheels to follow the contour of the circumference of the circle. The other problem I've got is that my robot twists in yaw sometimes when it drives onto that cone shape, and that's because the wheel is tapered so it makes it drive round a corner. I'm really happy with how that's turned out, at least the wheel design with those twisted belts which seems really solid and I'm going to publish the CAD and the code for this whole robot now as open source and you can find that on GitHub and the link's in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership you can and those links are in the description to this video as well and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright that's all for now.